What's going on guys? Matt here with Carolina Coops and today we're in Magnolia Springs, way deep south in Alabama. To my right is Shelly. She is our customer of this wonderful goose house and the chicken coop. And what I wanted to do in this video is I begged her to come on camera because this is the first goose house we've ever had. And she is very smart, loves her animals. And I wanted to share with you guys her thoughts, her ideas, all her comments about the goose house. So Shelly, Thank you again You're for letting welcome. us come here. You are the best. Um, as I was just saying, I guess first tell us, you started with chickens and then you decided to get geese, why? So we, as you can see, we're very wooded. We're in South Alabama. We have chicken hawks, red tail hawks, yellow tail hawks, eagles, ospreys, they're all here on this property. So we lost chickens and um, I started reading about guardian geese Okay. and they keep an eye to the sky all the time. They'll warn the rooster, the rooster will get the chickens in. So we got four geese. Okay. So you got four geese, which hence the reason why we got a goose house. Right. One of the things I've heard, and you got to tell me if it's true or not, that if you want guardian geese, I've always been told you really want a guardian goose. Is it true that the way in order to have the goose protect your flock the best is just to have one? Or did you find it was pretty successful having more than one goose? So geese are flock animals. And just like any flock animal, they are not going to thrive by themselves. They also don't necessarily live with the chickens and as a community. Right. They live among the chickens, but the geese really kind of need to be with another goose. That's my opinion. Okay. I'm sure people would disagree with that. My geese are happy together. They stay right in the vicinity of the chickens. They warn if there's any predators. A fox came right up to the back gate, the chick, the, the geese went crazy and the, they did their job. The chickens went in the chicken coop. Okay. So I, I love that. I think that you should have more than one. But, okay. That um, makes sense. Yeah. Cause they are definitely still a flock animal and they still have a job to do. That is absolutely awesome. Now here we have this beautiful six by six goose house. And when it comes to a goose house or a duck house, what I have learned is there's nothing crazy about them. It's just four walls, a floor and a roof. They just have to have a spot to go in there, sleep at night, lay their eggs, and... Um, sometimes I, they lay in the goose house. Sometimes they lay in the goose house. So I would love to actually ask you a little bit more about that. Uh, but before we do that, the goose house, from a static point of view, is based on your chicken coop. The chicken coop was based on the house. Correct. This is my first time coming to see the goose house. This has been here for a couple of years now, maybe? Yeah something like that already so i have to ask you did we pull it off for you did evan do an amazing job when he came down to put this together yes evan almost died of a heat stroke <laughs> and we fed him margaritas while he's doing the roof <laughs> but it has worked out amazing it's we planned it geese have to have four square feet per goose we built it for six geese in case right goose math goose math nice right they also have to be put to bed every night. Geese Holy. don't come in like chickens oh, really? do. Right? So we have the goose parade every evening into the into the goose house. When they are in laying season, I do leave the back open during the day. Um, and so they will sometimes come back in the goose house to lay their eggs. They also lay all over the yard and you have to find you know, the goose eggs. Sure, but. absolutely. Because you're letting them out and about, which I absolutely love. Now, do you ever see the chickens coming in here to lay their eggs? Do you ever see the geese going into the chicken run? So the geese can't get in the chicken run because of the size of the chicken door. We okay. have the automatic chicken door. They also don't really stay in the chicken yard during the day because their water is outside. Okay. Geese free range all around. They need a the, lot more room. Right. So, um, I will admit that the chickens do go in the geese house. I think there's lots of bugs in there for one thing. Um, and I have forgotten to check for eggs. And the last clutch I found, I think was 26 <laughs> eggs in yeah, the goose so house. One of the things that can happen, if you let your chickens free range, which I cannot say enough, is so important. And one of the things that can happen 
when you let your chickens free range is they may not lay in the egg hutch. They may go find some place that's even better. So I can see some chickens wanting to go in there and lay some eggs. Now, overall, I tell you, one of the things uh, I was talking about when I first came over and saw the goose house when it comes to the aesthetics, I, I know how much you love your arches. I love these windows. I hope you love them as well. A lot of uh, love, blood, sweat, and tears went into the design with the arch and also make sure they're completely functional. Yep. I hope you love them every time you, you see them. There's uh, plenty of ventilation. It stays cool. It's, you run in there, it's not hot. It stays warm in the winter. It, it doesn't get wet when it rains. Which is very, very important. Yeah. So what I really need to do is we need to go behind the goose house open up those back goose house doors and I am dying to hear your thoughts about deep littering goose droppings. Are you ready? Ready. Awesome. We're behind the goose house and Shelly, what I'm dying to hear, and this was a big conversation we had when we first designed this, should we incorporate the deep litter? And I forgot something. We chose to go with the three quarter ply for the deep litter because ducks and geese that are web footed, we weren't too sure about the high density for some reason. So you'll have to remind me about that, but let's go open this up. I see you got your carabiner here, so I'm gonna make sure I don't put that in my pocket because I'm known to steal them. Love this. You see the arch, continue the clapboard all the way through. Okay, so we just dropped down the deep litter door. As you can see, we decided to go with plywood. Do you remember why? Because we talked a lot about that. What was the reason for going with the plywood inside the deep litter system instead of the food safe high density polyethylene? So webbed feet couldn't do the slicky floor. The, right. Um, also what we did with the plywood is we oiled it. Oh, that's right. Really, really well. A food safe oil. Right. Just like a wooden salad bowl. So it made it waterproof. Yeah. Um, so whenever I do take everything out, it gets re-oiled and then new hemp put in. Geese poop is really watery compared to chicken poop, okay. right? I mean, so you need to be able to absorb all that liquid. Okay, and I, I'm remembering now, when you and I were first talking about this, we weren't sure if the deep litter system was gonna work. Right. And if it didn't, that means we did not want to take a chance with a high density. But if it does work, you can see their feet won't get down to the high density. What are your thoughts? Are you deep littering the, the goose droppings? Yes, so we have always deep littered. It works great. Um, you can look, it's not wet. There's not wet spots. This is pretty- <laughs> Dry. Yeah, and it's, that's last night's, you know, dropping, so. <laughs> It's working. It doesn't smell. Of course, there's goose no poop smell doesn't at all. Smell as bad as chicken. Oh, so I didn't know that. Okay, fun yeah. fact. But um, it's mainly it's not wet. It's not moist. It's not damp. It's the it's, hemp is doing its job. Yeah, you're able to build up. The, how old? How how many weeks? Months are we looking at with the uh, the litter? So I changed that out probably in January. December, January. Okay, so and here we are, August. So this could be uh, up to eight months old. Right. That is incredible. Now, let me ask you. And I do turn it just like you do in a chicken coop. You can see that if you turn it every once in a while. Yeah. It tends to do better than if you just leave it there. Yeah, we just right. did a video on that. I tell you, I am sold on. I was never a fan of it because I didn't think it was really necessary. But um, I know Kristen and Mackenzie, they've said, no, it's better to stir it mm -hmm. because why not use up more of the hemp? Why keep adding if you don't need to? And I yeah. guess you, you would say the yeah, same thing. Yeah, because you can tell it's dry at the bottom and clean, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I love God, it. You're a chicken so, guy. Why I you know. I'm a poop? chicken coop guy. I'm not a chicken poop guy. <laughs> um, but anyways, so let me ask you this, because as you can tell, we couldn't bring the goose house up high because we needed to keep it low for the geese to have the right incline of ramp, uh, ramp to get in and out of the goose house. And we talked a lot about this, about, you know, let's make the deep litter system in case you can use it. But of course, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to clean it out. We got it lower to the ground. I often say with the chicken coops, look, there's no bending over, pulling, sweeping motion. Here, you might have to bend over a little bit, but actually standing here, this isn't bad. Or I can see, you know, do you, how, when you do clean it, tell me how you're doing it. Well, so I just pull up the big wheelbarrow right to the door. 
it's really tall in here. You can see like I'm pretty tall and yeah. I'm not going to bump my head. So I just get in here and toss it into the wheelbarrow. Okay. You know, it's easy. And, easy and so have you been doing it about maybe once a year? Or how how what, how long have you gone without having to clean out the goose house? Uh, it depends on the weather a little bit. Also, if we have like a hurricane blowing and water does get blown in, which is very rare, um, you don't want it to get moldy and stuff, right. right? So I'd say like late fall, I usually, or early winter, I usually pull it all out. Okay. And then um, add one bag in, and then I keep a bag on hand to kind of add some more in. All right, so speaking of bags, we're talking a bag of industrial hemp. And I'm sure if you've been following us, you've heard me say this, making every customer happy when it comes to the industrial hemp herd size has been a nightmare. I would say our half inch to maybe three quarters has been our sweet spot. 99% of the people have been very happy with that. I have mentioned to many customers, I do have some customers that don't like the bigger herd. They like the much smaller herd. Shelly is one of them. And Shelly, you also have horses. You have also, I think you had a donkey, I think, came in when we were last year. So you have a lot of animals. Right. You and I really trust your uh, what you say based on your experience. And you have a lot of experience with the smaller hemp herd. Please tell me what it is about the smaller hemp herd, that you why you like it so much. So I've also tried the larger when you guys had a hard time getting him oh, yeah. and you know, we got what we got, right? So I have tried the larger um, and that's when I became the smaller fan. I prefer the smaller size, whatever you, you said. Herd. Herd. Yep. Because it's more absorbent. And I've just found that it smells less. It seems to absorb better. Um, especially in the goose house, but I prefer the droppings it in are the, wetter. Right. And I prefer it in the chicken house as well. So the thing that I have been told about this and what you just said makes sense because technically it's smaller. You have more surface to absorb moisture. So in theory, it makes sense in my mind. The problem that I have actually seen and that other people have, have complained about is with the smaller herd, it tends to be more dusty. And the reason for that, so I've been told, is because the herd is so small, it's harder for them to de-dust it because they're actually sucking out the smaller herd. Um, and dust is important. It's very important to understand that that can be harmful, especially to chickens. I, do, do geese have sensitive respiratory systems yeah, as well? Yeah, I think all poultry does. But I mean, I'm looking inside here and I mean, you can like... There's hardly any dust. Right. I can't believe it. Um, so, you know, again, guys, I am always trying to figure out the best product for you guys. I wanna make having geese, chickens, ducks, whatever it is, fun and enjoyable. And when it comes to the diaper of your coop, it is important that we get the right stuff. And I have been asked, Matt, why don't you offer two different herd sizes? That isn't as easy as you would think, but I know Shelly said, Matt, uh -uh, I only want the small stuff. And I have had other customers say the same thing. And I guess it does make sense. Now, is this, the smaller herd that you bought from us a while back, or did you have yeah, that? So that's the Obby Bose chicken. Yeah. Um, I think when we tried the larger one, it was the Obby Bose horse hemp. Yep. And uh, I just, I prefer that. Prefer when Evan brought the chicken coop, Evan also packed the chicken coop with hemp. Yeah. So I, I got some free shipping there nice. on the hemp, but he always also was so heavy. We didn't think about how much weight we had just added that we had a little bit of trouble getting it off the truck. Oh, wait a minute. This came to you fully assembled. Yes. He just had to do the roof. Yeah. We had the slab poured and we had a skid and we just set it oh, down. Oh, that had to be a nightmare. Boy, I'm sorry. I missed that <laughs> one. Um, that's right. All right. Well, that, that is so helpful. And again, we're just always trying to make everyone out there as happy as possible, even when it comes to the composting system, the deep litter inside your uh, chicken coop, your goose house, your duck house. I think it's spot on. Perfect. Well, a lot of that is thanks to you. You are so smart when it comes to the designs and the things that you know you want. And I say it all the time, we get the best ideas from our customers. Our job, Evan's job, is to figure out how to make it happen. And I think that's what we did here. I love that sound. It'll never get old. I love that you reminded me about oiling it. 
Wood loves oil. So beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to make sure I don't steal your carabiner. Look at that. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them in the comment section for my YouTube chicken police. Let me know what you didn't like about it. But for all the other 99.99% .99 of the people that love this and give us a thumbs up, thank you so much for that. Shelly, thanks again. You're thank the you. best. Um, I can't wait. I think we're going to start really talking about doing the aviary over there. Yep. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you are not already subscribed to our YouTube channel or not following us on Instagram, make sure you do that. Most important, hit that bell. So every time we go live, like every Friday noon Eastern for VCL, Video Chicken Live, you will be notified. Come watch us. We'll see you next time. Later.